Well, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining. I'm sorry we're having a little bit of technical glitch, so, but we'll be starting in just a moment. Thank you. All right, well, welcome everyone. We'll give another minute or two for people to come in and we'll be starting the webinar shortly. Thank you. Okay. All right. So welcome to Social Solutions Software Webinar, and thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Keiko Miyahara from the UCSF California Oral Health Technical Assistance Center, and I'll be hosting today's presentation. So the purpose of this webinar is to present information on software option for the special one-time funding opportunity. The goal is to increase children receiving dental screening and referral to care by utilizing referral management tools to improve communication, information sharing, and care management among providers and delivery systems. So some housekeeping before we start. Everyone is muted, so if you experience any technical issues, please use the chat box to connect for help. Please use the Q&A box to ask questions during the webinar. And this presentation will be recorded and will be available on COTAC's website. All right. So I would like to introduce our speakers for today, Nick Musalami and Jeff Hagwood. So Nick is leading social solutions government team deployment across the United States. He has spent eight years helping evangelize mission-focused technology for state and local public health agencies, including state of California. As a father of four, including a child with special needs, Nick is particularly passionate about helping child and family programs to get upstream, prevent risk, connect families with the resources and programs that can help transform their lives. Our second speaker is Jeff Hagwood. Jeff is an Apricot Certified Implementi Implementation Partner specializing in enterprise deployments of Apricot 360 for nonprofits and public sector agencies in California and across the United States. Most recently, supporting organizations in Sonoma, Mendocino, Fresno, Riverside, Butte, Siskiyou, San Benito, and Ventura counties. So welcome, Nick and Jeff. I would now like to turn this presentation over to Nick. Thank you. All right, thank you, Keiko. Appreciate the warm welcome. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So our goals for today, we're gonna to walk through a very brief overview of who Social Solutions is, um, and then we'll jump into a product demonstration, work with Dr. Kumar on some possibilities of what the product could look like, um, specifically for screening um, and referral and reporting. And then we'll talk through, uh, after the demonstration, uh, pricing and potential purchase options. But first, we're gonna actually start with a poll question. So first question, um, and actually two poll questions in a row. First question, do you have a robust system to address oral health screening today? All right, Keiko, let me know when we have um, all the respondents on that. All right. 
So I think I'm seeing, seeing the poll results. It's 100% um, resounding no. Um, so that's good. Uh, I think we're in the right place then. Um, second poll question, what is the biggest challenge facing your program today? All right, I think still some questions coming through, or responses coming through. Okay, so a little bit of everything here, um, about 38% care coordination referrals, 48% all the above, um, some determining eligibility, some ability to prove or demonstrate your impact. So I'm excited um, because I think there's some really good alignment uh, in terms of what we put together for today. Um, just a reminder, if you have questions, make sure to um, put those into the chat. We'll probably leave some time at the end to do a little question and answer as well. Um, and we will try to keep this you know, fun and informative. I know it's the lunch hour, so I wanna keep this as light as possible. Uh, just a brief overview. So who is Social Solutions? Um, we are technology uh, that is purpose-built and specifically designed for the social goods sector. Um, we were actually founded by care teams working out of Baltimore with at-risk youth. Um, and one of their biggest challenges was that, that they couldn't um, actually coordinate care across the city of Baltimore. Um, and so with that, founded actually a software in the early dot-com days. Um, and since then we have grown significantly. Um, we now uh, have three total software solutions encompassing 4,500 nonprofit state and local customers today. Um, and our software solutions are serving 24 million lives on a daily basis. We do a lot of work in public health today across a wide variety of initiatives, but our particular focus um, and where we do the most uh, work today is really with um, early childhood. So that cradle to career continuum. Um, 15 different statewide uh, public health deployments today. We also do a lot of work within California. So we're working with um, school districts. We're working with the Department of Social Services, um, with upstream programs, really any population that is vulnerable, um, we're working with those programs to help them, you know, better manage their data, improve the connections and engagements, um, and, you know, make the right connections to resources and through resource and referral. A few notes about our software. Um, it's secure, scalable, and compliant. Um, you know, we are third-party certified uh, through a SOC 2 Type 2 um, certification with a HIPAA amendment. So the data is always going to be HIPAA and FERPA compliant. We're hosted by Amazon Web Services, which is the best in class for hosting um, for government systems. And uh, you can always ensure that your um, solution will be built out to the maximum privacy, privacy and access control within the solution. You'll also have the ability to always know um, what the change log looks like because there's a full audit trail within the software. And the best part is you never have to download um, any add-ons or even download an app, um, whether you log in from your mobile device or log in from a desktop, um, the software solution is actually gonna know that whether you're on each of them and respond accordingly. I wanted to take a couple minutes to talk about capabilities before we jump into that demonstration. Um, and importantly, I think the first capability is really around managing data models and data hierarchy that is really specific to health and human services. So we've taken our, our 20 years of experience and, and built in um, that experience directly into the software. And so the ability to manage um, the hierarchy of data, whether it's you know client within a family, a family within a um, county, a school district within a county, and how that could potentially roll up to the state level is critically important. So having the right kind of design and relationships within the solution is a big part of our intellectual property and why we're different than other software solutions. 
Um, care management tools built into the solution and the ability to customize data collection is another capability that I really wanna highlight. So within our software solution, we have um, a custom form builder, which allows you to build out any forms within the solution and everything is drag and drop. So importantly, you know, when you need to add a new assessment to the software solution, you can do that without calling on a developer to do that work. Of course, we have a full implementation team, a full support team, we can help you out with that. But importantly, you know, there's not material code changes that are happening within the system. It's just building out a new table based on this form builder. Um, and that cascades to reporting as well. You also benefit from our library of best practices and evidence-based tools. Um, so tools that you know, help you to better engage with families, assess, address social needs, address social determinants of health. We have a, um, a suite of tools that are already built into our system so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And all of this gives you real-time insight into the data that, that you have today. Um, it allows you to see your data and to manage your data in a more effective way. Um, I talked a little bit about mobile before, but I think it's worth highlighting that mobile really means two things. It means mobile for the dentists and hygienists that um, you know, might actually do rapid mobile screening with our software solution on that roster of students so that they can send results to parents, um, make referrals to the right kinds of programs. But it also means on the parent side, providing that point of equity and access that doesn't exist today whereby they can have a better understanding of um, the plan of care for their child. They can respond and engage and be part of that plan um, to really drive better performance and better outcomes over time. Finally, another insight or another capability is insights and reporting um, and then reporting compliance. So within the solution, we have a baked in uh, reporting platform, just like the form builder, you can actually do drag and drop um, to build out reports in the solution. Um, those reports can be deployed as dashboards, they can be deployed to specific users, um, and they can be used to manage a whole lot of different needs. So, so um, understanding you know, at the local level what program efficacy looks like or what those key performance indicators look like as you're trying to drive towards success. But at the same time, meeting those state level needs or even federal grant needs um, from a reporting compliance perspective. Um, again, because it's all drag and drop, because all of the data fields in the software solution are customizable, very easy to um, build those reports that you need to you know, see better data about your programs and to report up to your funders. Before we jump in, I think um, what I really hope that you take away today is that Apricot 360, it really is an ecosystem for oral health prevention. Um, we can port in your school district data to uh, support your hygienists and your dentists who are working directly, um, with, directly with the schools to do screenings. Um, you can build in specific screening tools. We have a, a few examples to show you today, but again, just note that any screening or risk prioritization tools can be built into this solution with relative ease. Um, we have a pre-built parent uh, engagement portal and tools whereby we can send emails, text messages over to parents. They can digitally sign off on consent. The system also manages referrals. So not just, um, you know, did I send uh, John Smith to um, agency A, but did I send that person to that agency and what was the actual outcome of that referral? Um, also, what are... Um, my, what does my entire resource directory of referral partners look like? You can bake that into the overall software solution. And then again, from a reporting perspective, that reporting can be used for your day-to-day -day, um, program management, um, customizable dashboards, localized reporting, and um, state indicators. And then finally, um, if everyone's on the same system, or even if everyone is on different systems, we can actually roll up the data from all of the different partners up to the state level so that there's a single comprehensive view at the state level around those key performance indicators. All right, lastly, we're going to end it with a poll. Um, what are you most interested in learning about today?
All right, I think few answers still trickling in. All right, so 36% all the above. 4% um, screening efforts, 4% impact on in state indicators, and 57% uh, resource and referral management. All right, good stuff. Well, with that, um, we are going to turn it over to Jeff, my counterpart, um, and we're going to actually start showing the software solution. Great. Thanks, Nick. Just a quick thumbs up. You can see my screen okay. I think we're seeing the oral health assessment word doc. Yep. Perfect. Awesome. Well, that's where I want to start. Great. So when we were brought this opportunity to take a look at uh, putting together a solution for you guys, uh, we were handed this oral health assessment form. Uh, this form, I, I think everyone's familiar with it. Uh, maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't, but effectively what it's doing is capturing a, a child and an outcome associated with a dental assessment or screening. And so what I'm going to walk through today is how this can be deployed in a workflow in Apricot 360. And I think you'll find some exciting op opportunities to plug these into your programs uh, to streamline data entry and to report uh, more concretely around the fields and data that's captured in a, in a document like this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna close the Microsoft Word version and we're gonna, we're gonna show you the, the slick uh, software version now. So the whole solution starts with uh, students, children getting into your system. Now we see that as a twofold approach. Uh, we can integrate and pull in SIS data or student information system data from schools if that's available to you. So instead of having parents or teachers or other individuals uh, type the information into the system, um, we can grab an export file from your SIS and port that into Apricot 360. We can also present parents the opportunity to enroll or complete an intake to do a dental screening. And this here is a form representing that dental screening consent. So this form is fully configurable and customizable. Um, it's been modeled off of the Word document. So you can see very common information, today's date, the name of the child. Given that we're only on an hour demo, I won't uh, waste 10 minutes showing you how to type into a form. I'm sure we all understand uh, that process. Some demographics, the parent guardian's name, contact information, potentially the school name that they're located at, the teacher's name and the grade, and then the ability to sign for consent. This is something you can deploy on your website. This is something you can share via text message. This is also something you can share via email. The advantage and the nice thing about these web forms is that upon submission, they populate your Apricot 360 database and they are mobile ready can see how the form scales uh, to match a mobile device. Upon submission, these files drop into Apricot 360 into a directory of, of children or children profiles. Apricot has two core areas in which we track information. We can track information at the profile level which can be customized to reflect any demographics that you'd like to see about those children. Again, this can come over from the SIS system or populated from the web form that we just uh, went through. We can also track activity for that child. In this case, from this document folder, we can see that this child has assigned consent which came in from the web form. We can also complete a dental assessment. We can make referrals. We can log client satisfaction. Um, we can even log provider services if your uh, dental, dental hygienists and practitioners are actually in the system 
logging activity with these, with these children. Now, the exciting part about how Apricot is designed is that the data entry screens for all users are the same. Um, we can configure these for your, uh, your higher level users as well as your, your users that have lower access permissions. And we can organize all of this data around county level, school level, even the family level from a permissioning standpoint. Now, once a family fills out this form or they are imported from the SIS, our priority in Apricot 360 is to engage that family in a connect login. A connect login is a portal experience and the portal experience is where this family will review their assessments, um, review information that's been submitted about their child. It's a secure way for them, for us to communicate back and forth with that family, with that parent um, about that child's experience. Our preference in terms of communicating with families is to use the portal opposed to the alternative of email or text messaging um, when we deal with the actual data. So what we like to do is we like to prompt our users to log in and view information in the secure portal. So we would send emails, send text messages in order to review dental assessments. We can also review things like our consent submissions. And anything that's related to this, this child's account. Now, the fun part is where we can actually include dental practitioners in Apricot to complete these dental assessments. From the child's record, a dentist can log into Apricot log an assessment date, various questions about the screening outcomes. We can check to email a notification to the parent or guardian that an assessment has been completed. And then we can add signatures in other fields to capture any types of compliance or uh, information that's gonna help communicate uh, to the family. Um, the outcome of this assessment. Now, even more exciting is we can also attach images to these records. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually choose a file um, from my desktop. Let's take a lower as well. I joked on an earlier demo that I, I wasn't running around my house trying to snap pictures of my kids' teeth to get in this demo. So I, I decided to take an image out of your, uh, your dental screening. Um, that, I think my kids were appreciative of that. And when you save this record, and look at that, as, as, a, as a user, I even forgot a required field. I suppose that's a good demo. We can enforce required fields to make sure that data quality is true. This particular record upon save will actually send an email to the family identifying that a new assessment's been completed for their child. So here's an example. Um, this says test, you've received a dental screening by this dentist on this date. Please click this link to log into the portal and review the outcomes of your assessment. So coming back to this secure environment in which we can uh, work with, with families, we can send and receive information through this portal. This portal will actually display the dental assessments that have been completed for this individual. And again, the parent can log in, they can review the outcome of that assessment. They can even download and review these images, pull this over here. And if they're on a mobile device, 
all of this is scalable to a mobile friendly environment. Now, some other things that we can do to support your interaction with these dental providers as well is your system can be organized to manage a directory of dental providers. These dental providers can be your referral partners. They can be the providers that are actually receiving these referrals. They can also be the providers who are completing the assessments. Now, one of the neat things is that Apricot can scale to many types of user roles. So while we've talked about the child information and the ability to complete an assessment, we can also intake dental providers. So here's an example of a form that could be used for a dental provider to register to be a part of your resource network. Here, they can manage their profile. They can send and receive referrals. They can be a part of your ecosystem as you work with children. To us, this is an exciting opportunity for your groups to engage in an automated way between two different roles, the dental, prov the dental provider and also the, the child parent guardian um, that's receiving the services. So then for the big one, how do we send and manage referrals? Referrals are managed at the, at the child level. So what we are interested in understanding is which children are getting referrals. And of those referrals, what's the outcome of those referrals in terms of dental services that they might be receiving? So the same as the assessment, we would go to the child's record. Within that child's record is the ability to log a referral or to send one to a provider. Once I open up this record, what I'm able to do is I'm able to create a referral by searching and selecting from a list of available providers. Your system or this system is configured in, in a way that we can search by insurance type. We can insure, uh, search by different types of uh, providers. So for instance, if it's an individual practice or a multi-provider practice, we can also uh, segment and organize information by different types of services that they might offer to ensure that this individual, this child gets to the right location. Upon creating a referral, we can drop this into this test dentist's account by providing them the child's information. And upon saving this record, we send an, uh, an email notification to the dentist identifying that they've received a new referral. One of the things that uh, we noted from earlier uh, demos was that uh, there was some concern about the volume and the in interaction between the dental provider and the receipt of the referral. We have a number of different workflows that we can accomplish. We can do email triggers, we can do dashboard reports. Um, we can also do um, other types of prompts to get uh, dental providers into the platform to confirm the receipt of the referral. So here you can see that when, when the dentist receives this referral, they have an opportunity to actually make a decision on that referral, noted as accepted or not accepted. If treatment was provided, make that tag and save the record. Nick talked a little bit about reporting. Based on how we organize information for the, the outcome of these referrals, we are able to report on the full suite of, of services that we've provided that child. So for example, we can see how many children in the date range have received assessments. 
what type of urgency there was for dental treatment at that assessment. How many of those referrals were accepted, pending, or declined? And how many of those referrals received treatment outcomes? These reports are fully configurable. So if there are other types of outcomes or other types of engagements that you'd like to have with these various roles, those can be configured. And Nick, it might be a good idea. Would it be worthwhile showing them how easy it is to add a field to a form? A hundred percent. Yeah, I think that would be perfect. Yeah, so one of the things that we, during earlier demos, um, there was a lot of questions and concerns about um, how easy it is to configure the software. So for instance, let's say that we wanted to change um, a field on the referral to capture something different. Um, let's say that on this referral form, this dental referral form, instead of research, re, uh, referral accepted, we wanted to identify um, referral received. Apricots is easy as adding fields or updating values and publishing the form as live. Or let's say that we wanted to rate how this treatment went. I could add a Likert scale. And you can see that Jeff's actually adding the, the, the weights in here as well to the back end values. And those can both, both the actual value or actual selection and the weight can be pulled into reporting. And on the right hand side, you'll see, you know, where he actually pulled from. There's 72 different types of question choices. Um, I don't think we've run into a type of question that we haven't been able to handle with these with this robust um, engine for question building. Publish the form. And at that moment, your users, these uh, dental providers that are receiving referrals can start answering this question on the front end. In fact, if I refresh this form that we just submitted, there would be a new field right here to do that. Report building is a very similar uh, concept. Um, similarly to how forms work, uh, we can very easily build, uh, build any type of report with any of the data sets that are in Apricot. So any question that you build is reportable. And as you did with forms, um, the way in which we add fields to reports is in the exact same context. So you can actually um, make sure I've got the right forms of job information. Let's say we want to add the created by field to this report. You can drag that in and start building queries and report views um, to, to model the data that you have in the platform. So one of the things that, that we're cognizant of is that as these programs shift, as your needs shift and change in how you're engaging with both uh, children and families, as well as these dental providers, that you may need to change the, the structure of your system. And the administrator palette on the back end gives you that capability in a drag and drop format. So just like with the creation of forms right on the right hand side, every single field is going to be automatically available um, to drag and drop and pull into um, a report. So you need a new report uh, that shows you, you know, a, a new way of slicing and dicing um, the students that have been served or the families that have been served. You, know, you can easily pull that data directly um, into a report, deploy it to a dashboard, um, export it out of the system, um, you know, lots of different ways to, to basically use this reporting to help your day-to-day -day program work and um, you know, meet your overall funder and compliance needs.
And these reports when pushed out to end users are fully runnable at that moment. They're templates, which means that the, the, the data is real time. It's populating this report each time that the user runs it. And the reports and also this, respect the security role that um, each user might have. So someone who's got administrator level, right? They could see everything, um, you know, across the entire enterprise. Um, but somebody who has, you know, just a very granular view can only see, you know, perhaps their caseload. So the last thing that I want to highlight, and then I think we should open it up for questions. I know we only have an hour and Nick, you have some other slides that you want to get through um, is I do want to talk about uh, satisfaction surveys or the ability to push out information to parents via direct messaging. So we do have the ability to uh, push forms out to families um, via text messaging or email. And one of those forms that we built in, in this demo is a client satisfaction survey. This is something that you can send to families. They can fill it out and upon submission, it's automatically tied to that child's account. So you can correlate satisfaction with referral outcomes and the original assessment. So we can actually chain together that sequence of events in order to report on um, ultimately how they were screened, what the outcome of the referral was, and whether or not the family was satisfied with the assessment and the and the services that they that they were offered. And again, I think it's a, it's an exciting opportunity for uh, direct messaging because text text messages is becoming a much more prevalent deployment for many of our Apricot 360 customers, as are email notifications. Um, and that is uh, fully baked into the license. Um, each Apricot 360 instance comes with the ability to make those communications uh, with, with, your, with your participants. Nick, what do you think about opening up for, for some questions? Is that is now a good time to do that? Yeah, I think, was there one more thing you wanted to show around fee for service too? Oh yeah, the last Let's minute of that. Yeah, well, we can do that for sure. So one of the things that was asked uh, was around fee for service. Um, I, uh, we got this about an hour ago, so uh, bear with me, but we did boot up a demo uh, form for this to that where dental providers could log um, services against a child's account. Um, similar to how the dental assessment works, um, they can actually log what services they, they've provided, um, log their account as the provider, track different service types. Um, this is really doesn't do justice to ultimately what we could do. We can actually break this down by billing code. Different codes can have different rates. Um, different rates can have different applications for the output. Um, of these services, uh, but I gave you some, some basic service types, the amount of time. Um, in this case, there's a rate per hour, but we could auto-populate that. And these service logs can be queued up into a report, which can be exported into um, either an invoicing solution, or um, it, it can also be exported into a billing solution, depends on um, what, your, what your preference is. We can also set up this form if you're actually doing the uh, submission of invoices in Apricot. We can actually submit this form to accept an invoice from a provider as well, um, at which point you can either approve or decline and then export the data to your accounting solution to cut checks. Um, that workflow is pretty involved. Um, we, can, we can go through it. Um, at, at another demo, probably not, not able to get through it in 20 minutes, but we can do end-to-end -end tracking of data relative to what needs to be billed out the back end. So I see there are some chat messages coming in here. 
Yeah, absolutely. It, it looks like there's some questions around care coordination, Jeff, and um, fields like um, insurance eligibility and, you know, whether or not the child has special needs, um, you know, what sort of treatment complexity. So I think, you know, maybe even showing the document folder again might help. Yeah. So one of the things that we can do on even the profile form is we can track uh, so I know that a lot of SIS systems will come in, they'll identify um, if, if there's a special needs um, child involved, we can tag these profiles with that information. Um, we can also identify if, if they're on an IEP or any other types of um, uh, fields and demographics that might help us understand that. Additionally, for insurance information, um, generally, we will include insurance information either um, at the child level or as an insurance profile in the child's file. So uh, we don't have that built in this demo, but what we can do is create an insurance profile that identifies what insurance this child has, and that can be used as a forcing function or an algorithm for which, which providers or which uh, directions you make referrals. And that's something we've, we've done in a number of uh, Apricot 360 builds. Okay, next one, Jeff, is how would we envision the status improvements on a case or get notifications to make an action? So mm -hmm. maybe you can talk about the um, the ability to you know send triggers in terms of notifications and then also um, status improvements on a case change over time. Sure. So the the dental screening is configured as effectively a one time um, screening. Um, I'm I'm not familiar if this one actually has a pre post component to it, but um, the way that Apricot is designed is that we can create pre-post assessments in the document folder for a particular child where you take one assessment and then we use reporting to compare the scores between the two. Um, that can chart improvement. In fact, uh, one of the surveys that we have, I have another build here. Let me pull it up here. Um, an example of this is, let's just take our uh, uh, Arizona self-sufficiency matrix. This is a pre-post assessment template. Um, might not be relevant to your program work, but you can see this assessment is taken at three month intervals. And what it does is it back end rates each of these questions. So for each question, we can chart progress over time as we log our zero, three, six, nine month intervals. So what you're able to do is stack up many surveys in this document folder and then report the pre-post difference in score, in score between the two assessments. And then do you wanna talk about the email triggers and that functionality, Jeff, as well? Sure. So why don't I go to the back end real quick and I'll show you the email trigger that's coming off of the dental assessment. Again, trying to uh, demonstrate the Apricot's configurability. So this form has a checkbox where it says send email notification to parent or guardian. That's driving an email notification system here where we can identify who's receiving the email, the text of the email with merge fields. So you can put the parent's first name in here and the filters that fire that email off. So in this case, we're doing when a record's created or updated and that send email notification to parent or guardian is yes. And that, that what that does is that, that will send an email on every action that looks like this and these bold fields here are the merge tags. So these are the fields that get customized for each email sent. Now, beyond that, we can also send uh, more broad messaging as well. 
So for instance, if you wanted to send a message to a group of children at a particular school, you can use our direct messaging feature to send a text message or an email to the e email or uh, phone number on that child's record. So you can create a new message. Select the participants that you want to send the message to. You can draft your message. You can even append a form. So if you'd like to send a form for that person to fill out, this is where we could use the client satisfaction survey. And that's a secure web form, right? They click on a link, it opens up a secure portal, they can fill out that form and that data goes directly into their document folder. So it could be a follow-up assessment or it could even be, you know, you know, something like a community health survey or an Correct. oral health survey. And all of that is actually linked up within our, our secure connect portal. Um, the form populates the data to this, this environment, um, which is unique to this particular parent guardian child combination. So again, trying to keep the data component of this behind um, a secure set of infrastructure, um, whereas we can do um, other types of messaging, messaging that prompts people to take action uh, via email and text message. So we can send that off. And then we can wait for these messages to be opened and we can track whether or not they've gone out. Now, the great thing is that you could send this out if you had, let's say we had a database in place and you had uh, 200 children that had been screened earlier in the year and you wanted them to fill out a satisfaction or status survey maybe six months later after the uh, assessments had been completed, you could send a message to all of those participants in one mailing, so to speak, or one message send. So we have uh, campaign-based messaging, not just individual messaging built into Apricot 360. So reading this, uh, we have one more question here. Yeah, so based on urgency of need, some cases need to be fast-tracked. Can the system be designed to be smart and set timelines for a care coordinator? Um, they may want to avoid a care coordinator to maybe backdate each case and read the notes or to go back to a case and read the notes. So Jeff, I'm, you know, as I'm reading that, I'm thinking about how on the dashboard we can flag um, you know, risk and um, those kind of high-level cases as well. Right. So one of the things that we can do in in Apricot, uh, this is something we work cl closely with our clients on during implementation, are the algorithms that go into decision making or decision support relative to indicators that are coming through various data entry forms. So if the assessment screens at a particular level, um, we actually build dashboards and props that match those criteria to surface those cases ahead of others. Um, this is a kind of a loose example, but this is a grouping of two different types of, of cases, active and pending. This could be by risk, low and high. Um, and in order to do that, we would map, what we do is we actually map out your workflow and your decision support uh, matrix, the formulas that you use to define risk so that the system populates, populates that in a smart way. Um, so all the business logic behind, you know, a, a risk-based workflow, right, can be built directly into the software. Yes. And what I think is most important is usually we'll inform those risks based on how you configure the fields on different forms. So for instance, maybe your consent form 
you ask some key questions, the assessment form asks some key questions, and that's what ultimately buckets them into a specific category. Nick, you see any other questions? Otherwise, I, I think we could pass back to you potentially for the. Yeah, I think that's minute, it. We've got about eight slide. minutes. So I think that makes sense. All right. I think if you stop sharing, we can do it. And, and I'll monitor the chat just in case there are other questions here. Perfect. Um, one second here. Let me get the right screen up. There we go. All right, so what I really hope you all saw again was that Apricot was extremely scalable. It's a software solution that's you know very customizable and yet intuitive and, and super easy to use um, with the wizard technology and the drag and drop functionality. Um, I think what's important about Apricot 362 is that all features and functions, um, you know, workflow, uh, connect parent portal, the ability to send text messages, everything is included in the overall licensing costs without any additional kind of, uh, you know, one-off a la carte features. Um, so it's basically all features included. You pay a user amount, you pay a, um, a support amount on the licensing side, um, and that's it. So this is what the overall licensing model looks like. I gave some examples of, of pricing um, in different buckets of users. I also shared um, what our um, price per hour is um, for the one-time fees for the initial build, for training, for, in, for things like integration. Um, you know, just at a high level, right, we provide um, many different kinds of levels of support. So for very large projects, we do, you know, full-on FTEs for very small ones. We can do smaller support packages. Um, similarly, um, you know, many different buckets of users. We work with CDCR, for instance, and, you know, they have 10,000 users that are utilizing our software solution today. So we can scale down, we can scale up um, as much as you need. And then in terms of how to purchase, I think this is, you know, half the battle, right, um, with state and local government. So we have third party contracts today that leverage um, nationwide procurement vehicles like Omnia. So um, SHI, CDW, you can purchase directly through them. In California, we also work with small businesses that um, you can purchase through alongside CDW to meet that small business requirement. Um, and then um, we do have contracts that you can piggyback off of. So we work with um, agencies like First Five of Fresno, First Five of Ventura that have cooperative language built into their overall agreements. And um, otherwise we can do um, contracts direct. So we do that a lot actually with um, many of the counties that we work with. And we have a specific um, rider that we've developed for um, county and state level exceptions that are consistent with the state of California. So with that, we're heading up to poll question number four, um, which is our last one. Would you like to learn more about Apricot 360? All right, so some good responses here. Um, it seems like there's a lot of folks that are interested in learning more. Um, so with that, um, I think uh, Keiko and, and team are gonna share you know, my contact information. Um, we have some um, marketing documents that I can share with the team as well. And then uh, just a remi quick reminder that I know that um, the recording will be posted at the link that is in the chat as well. So grab a copy of that. Um, and we're excited to chat with you all further and see how we might be able to help your work. Great. Well, thank you so much, Nick and uh, Jeff. It was very informative. Um, we still have a couple more minutes. So um, if you want to go ahead and type in some questions, we can take a question or two. Yeah, I would love it. Um, yeah, 
So it seems like we don't have any questions at this time. Um, so we will go ahead and like Nick said, we'll go ahead and have the recording as well as uh, Nick's and uh, Jeff's contact up on her website. Um, and then, or if you can, uh, if you would like to, I can go ahead and um, field any questions um, to me and I can field it to uh, Nick or Jeff. Um, and actually, um, there's a question that came in. Uh, it says, did you mention if it has integration options? It does have integration options. So um, we can integrate through a variety of different means. We have an open API, which means that we can connect with other software solutions. We've also built a nifty little tool that allows us to automate imports from many different types of systems, so long as they can meet the incoming requirements of data. So it's essentially like a secure file transfer, but it automatically um, uploads the data in the software solution. Great. Um, and another question is that when you say user, do you mean a dental hygienist in a school or a program? Um, user would be anyone on the administration end, um, a dental hygienist um, in a school, anyone maybe doing kind of more comprehensive care coordination within the system. Um, but a referral partner would not need a user license. Right. So we have just another minute or two. Um, probably the last question. Um, so for the provider portal, can you tell a bit more and do they need a license? Yeah, that's the same thing as the referral partner. So the, um, the referral partner or provider portal, they wouldn't need their own license. Um, you know, again, it, we're, we're, we want to encourage you all to have your entire referral directory in the system and have all those folks coordinating with you um, to be able to provide, you know, the outcome of the referral and maybe some more information. But um, the way we're thinking about it, we're not we're not giving them a full on license to the overall system. Um, they're really just doing kind of a very, they have a limited view of what they can do in the system and have a limited um, capacity to enter data in the, in the solution to support referrals. Great. All right, well, thank you so much. We are at one minute. I am just putting um, your contact information as well as Jeff's um, contact information in the chat. Perfect. Um, Hey, well, again, thank you so much, Nick and Jeff. That was very informative. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Again, if you have any questions, please go ahead and um, send it to me or send it to Nick or Jeff. We'll have their contact information on the COTAX website. So again, um, thank you. This is going to conclude our webinar today. And we hope you have enjoyed this presentation. Uh, we look forward to our next gathering. Thank you and have a wonderful day.